a guest uh, in your committee and a, and a guest in your country. Um, actually, Mr. Chairman, you're, you're right. I followed your career for a number of years as the police chief and now as a senator, and it's, 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 it's an honor to be in front of you today. So um, you, uh, I think also that your, your, you and your staff should be commended because the, the bill that you're reading today is if I look at global standards, uh, you've, you've, you've nailed it right on the head of how it should be written. It's strong to basically help solve crime, exonerate the innocent and protect innocent people, but also strikes a great balance for human rights and privacy. Um, so next slide, uh, I'm going to give a presentation today, Mr. Chairman, if uh, it should last about 12 minutes, but if you want to speed me up, you let me know. Um, no, but no, we don't need to speed you up. Okay. We can, uh, we may request you to uh, speed down so <laughs> okay. that uh, we can uh, clearly uh, understand Great. what you're saying. Great. Okay. Please Great. Wait. You bet. So, um, as the general explained, we have a, a significant background in advising countries on DNA database legislation. Uh, we have a team across the world that does this, and we've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, next slide. So, I, I know, Mr. Chairman, that you know how the databases work because of your background, but for the sake of the audience, just it's they're just like fingerprints. The idea is that you collect somebody's DNA for identification when they, they're arrested or convicted, um, and then you search crime scenes against that database so you can solve crime. Now, car parliaments, congresses around the world and policymakers pass this legislation for four, excuse me, uh, four primary public policy benefits. These databases solve crime, they prevent crime, they exonerate the innocent, and they actually save the government money. Next slide. They have significantly solved crime across the world. And if you look at a couple of the older databases in the world, I'll, I'll highlight the United States and the United Kingdom, by getting about 10% of your population in the database, which is generally a country's criminal population, the United States has actually had 580,000 hits to crimes that they never would have solved if it wasn't for the US Congress putting up together the, the DNA database. And the United Kingdom, even more impressive, a country of 70 million people have 6, 000, 6 million criminals in their database, 10% of their population, and they've had 750,000 hits. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. Uh, next slide. So let's look at the, the big decision that a uh, Congress has to make is how many people go in the database and that decision that you make, sir, will determine how many crimes you solve and how many people you can exonerate. So for example, there's a few countries that have only put sex offenders and violent criminals in the database. But when you do that, your matches are extremely low. You can only get maybe five to 10 percent matches when you take a crime scene from a rape or a homicide and put it in your database. But the countries that include all crimes, like your bill does, you can actually achieve a hit rate of 60%. Meaning that, for example, if you find over the course of a week, 10 stranger rapes that occur in the city of metro area of Manila, if you simply do one test and put that DNA into the database, you're gonna identify six suspects right away out of the 10 rapes that happened. It's an amazing uh, program. Um, Next, I think we skipped one, Ms. Lorna. The, the, uh, the slide, it deals with the second goal, which is to prevent crime. And let me explain, when you have a big database that hits at that high rate, you're preventing a lot of crime because you find the right criminal quickly, you remove them from the community, and they're not able to go on and commit more crimes. And I'll give you a story out of the country of Brazil. Next slide. And this is the case of Marcos Teguero. And in 2006, he, uh, the Brazilian Congress was presented, next slide, Ms. Lorna. The Brazilian Congress was presented with legislation um, that would require the criminal database to be created, but they actually voted no. They didn't have the information to understand the value of the criminal database, and they voted no. That next year, this individual was released for prison in 2008, and because his DNA was not convicted, when he went back to his hometown and committed five rapes and murders all one month apart, 
DNA at every crime scene. When they collected the first crime scene DNA and put it in the database, they didn't get a match because they didn't take his DNA. So basically, if the Brazilian Congress would have passed the legislation in 2006, four out of those five rapes and homicides would never have would have happened. And we actually know who they are. This is the first victim. Unfortunately, she would have died anyway. But all four of these other young women, one more click, Lorna, would have still be alive today if the Brazilian Congress would have passed that law in 2006. Now, when the families of all these people figured out that their daughters and wives and mothers could still be alive if that law passed, they went down to the Capitol in Brasilia. Next slide. They worked with the Senate. They worked with the Congress. They worked with the president. And they quickly say, passed that bill so, this, so they could prevent more deaths in the future. So it's a very good story and a very good example. The next example, the reason why we have these databases is to exonerate the innocent. Again, imagine if you have these high hit rates, what happens? You find the criminal quickly with one test. That means that police don't have to investigate 10 or 20 more people. They don't have to question them. They don't have to make them feel uncomfortable. They don't have to arrest them falsely, as we know, even convict them falsely. And that's how these databases exonerate the innocent. And finally, Mr. Chairman, the main reason that we have these databases, they can actually save your government money. There's a number of studies uh, throughout the world, and here's some from the United States that show, well, hold on that one there, Lorna, just up on deterrence. Uh, one more click. Uh, these studies show the savings to government. So this lady took two control groups. She found two control groups that were uh, convicted of a, of a crime. They weren't in prison. They were put out in the community even though they were convicted. One had DNA taken. One group had, did not have DNA taken. The groups with DNA were 42% less likely to commit another crime within an, a year because they were scared they knew that if they did, they would be discovered because their DNA is in the database. So you can imagine how much savings occurs when you have 42% less crime by those individuals. Next click. The next study she looked at is what's the actual crime reduction every time you increase your database size by 10%. So let's say your law would have only gone to convicted criminals, but then you add arrestees and you add it, to, you increase your database 10%. What's the impact? on crime and she found that when you every time you increase by 10% you have 5% less murders, 6% less rapes, 8% less vehicle thefts. So clearly showing the link between database size by legislation and reducing crime. And finally, she looked at what's the social next click. What's the social cost to crime? And she looked at things like when you're a victim of a crime, uh, hospital bills, time out of work, uh, property crimes, stuff you lose. And they calculated that for every time you add one person to the database, you're actually saving the citizens of the U.S. $20,000, or excuse me, the government of the U.S. $20,000. And uh, so that she declared that in the United States in 2010, we added uh, six, 761,000 criminals to the database. And by doing that, uh, reducing the cost, we actually saved the government and the people of the United States um, over uh, 15 billion, I think that says $15 billion. So you can, you, you kind of get the point. And the next slide is another study I encourage your staff to research. Um, it just looks at one state, the state of Indiana, which is next to Illinois, the city of Chicago area. And they found that by taking the legislation to all arrestees and by having that high hit rate, they actually save the taxpayers of Indiana $60 million a year. So again, I encourage you to look at this data. Uh, this bill that you're passing can actually save your country money. Excuse me. Uh, how about the Philippines? Do you have an estimate as to how much we are going to save if we are, we're going to legislate uh, uh, I have not done that research. DNA law? Yeah, I haven't done that research, sir, but I that. encourage your, your staff to look at these studies and make okay. comparisons. Okay. Yes. Next Please continue. Slide. Yes. So I, I think the country that has most figured out, though, how much money you can save from putting up these databases is the United Kingdom. And I'm going to go through the numbers. Hold there, Lorna. We'll go one by one if you don't mind. So they have 63 million people in their database. And next click. They have six 
6.6 million people, I'm sorry, they have 63 million people in the country. They have 6.6 .6 million people in their database. That's 10% of their population, which they estimate to be their criminal population in the database. They add fifth, next click, they have 50,000 criminals a year to the database. But next click, here's the big one. They actually do 400, or excuse me, next click, Lorna. They do 40,000 crime scenes compared to the database every year. So that means there's not 40,000 homicides and rapes in the United Kingdom every year. That means they're doing homicides, rapes, every property crime, every drug crime, they're testing everything. And the reason they do that, next click, is because they've declared that they have a 66% hit rate, which means that they've had 750,000 hits, which means they have 76 hits a day in the United Kingdom for a population of 70 million people. So imagine if you have 76, 76 hits a day, how much crime you're gonna be able to solve, how much crime you're gonna be able to prevent and save money. And next click, what, and this just shows that 70% um, of all their tests against the database are property crimes. And they wouldn't be doing that if they weren't solving, saving money. Next, next slide. So to give you a little more background about the United States, as you may know, the uh, first click will go one by one, Ms. Lerna. Um, it has become an essential part of our, our criminal justice system in the United States. It's run by the FBI, but it appears in every element of our system. Uh, next slide, or, or click. We have 20 million offenders in our database. Next click. It's been operational since late 1990s. Next click. We have many, uh, it's known the FBI has set up many standards and quality assurance standards that are available to the rest of the world to utilize. Our law, we have a state system unlike yours. Every state controls what goes into the database. All of our states, like your bill, requires everybody to convicted to go in the database. Next click. But only 33 states require everybody convicted and arrested. Your legislation is everybody convicted and everybody arrested if they're charged, which means that our hit rate's gonna be lower than yours when your database matures because your bill goes a little further than the United States and you'll, you'll be able to achieve these high, high hit rates. Uh, our Congress quite hasn't gone to that level or our states haven't. Um, next click. So we've been at this 20 years around the world. Um, there were early adopters, like I said, the United Kingdom, United States, Australia, New Zealand, uh, they basically led the way. There was a lot of data, like I just presented to you. And because of that, we now have 59 countries around the world that have passed this legislation like yours, sir, and have implemented it on someone of a national scale. And here are those 59 countries that have done this. In Asia, you can see, and I actually have Philippines and Thailand mentioned as having databases because you already do. You've had a, a PNP decree that set it up. You just don't have the legislation to legitimize it. Uh, and that's what your legislation will do. Um, and the same goes for Thailand. But uh, you have, uh, and um, the, the one thing you'll notice is that this past year alone, there's been this huge explosion of legislation throughout the world. More than these 59 countries want in on this. And uh, here's the countries on the top line have, are countries that have introduced and passed legislation since COVID creating the legislation or this program. And you notice that even in Ukraine in the middle of the war, they actually passed legislation in their parliament and have begun implementation because they, they've they visualized post-war that they're gonna need a lot of human identification. Yeah. Um, and you can see I have Thailand and Philippines on here as you're actively looking to formalize your DNA programs today. Next slide. So the big question that, that members of your Senate and Congress have to look at around the world when they introduce this legislation is balancing the benefits to society of these databases and any concerns to privacy. Well, I've explained to you the benefits, solve, prevent, um, exonerate, and, and save. The privacy concerns uh, you have to show are the benefits outweigh, but the big thing to see, if we go back to that click, Lauren, right there, this is the only thing going into the database, these 27 numbers. So what, what people think, next click, Lauren, and hold there, 
a lot of people think that the whole genome is going into the database and that's why they get upset. But if you can explain to them that only those numbers are what goes into the database, not your genome, not anything that the government could look at for healthcare or anything like that, they start to see DNA as just like a fingerprint. It doesn't mean anything other than the ability to distinguish me from somebody else. And that's an important factor to, to deal. Some people will say though, that, well, only the numbers go into the database, but the government still has your biological sample. And maybe the government could do something evil with that, like test you for insurance reasons and things like that. So a way that your bill, and you have this in your bill to control for this, is you destroy the biological sample after the profile is uploaded to the database. That protects privacy because then there's no threat that you can use that biological sample for something other than identifying people. Next slide. In addition to that, uh, there's all these other things in your bill that allow for public privacy, like penalties upon misuse, giving the public trust they need to know that the police can manage an effective privacy conscious database. So with that, sir, I think I am uh, next click. I am done. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to be a resource to your team. Um, and providing information from around the world to make sure you have the best legislation that can solve crime, prevent crime, and exonerate the innocent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, have you been to the uh, FBI uh, DNA laboratory? I have. In fact, sir, I, I was with your the team you sanctioned five, five six years ago that you sent to the FBI, to, I was with that team, and uh, and took them to the FBI. It's, yes, it's a, it's a huge uh, yes. thing, right? Yes, new building. Yes, but uh, I also went to Philadelphia Police uh, DNA uh, Laboratory. Yes, I also yeah. went to New York Police in yeah. the DNA Laboratory, and uh, when I asked them, "How's your capability, Philadelphia Police?" Uh, How's your capability? Is it at par with the FBI uh, DNA? <laughs> they, they told me, no, no, we're better than the FBI uh, <laughs> uh, DNA capability. And then when I go to NYPD, and they, they say do. also that uh, we, we are well. better than the FBI uh, DNA uh, center. So, yeah. but anyway, that's, that's, beyond, uh, that's yeah. uh, beside the point. My point is... Uh, how, how do you do that in the United States? We have uh, every police department sure. as its own DNA uh, yeah. laboratory. How do you centralize everything? Sure. So we're, we're different than your country because we have a, a state system. So what happens is it, it's in three levels. So in, our, in each state, like California, um, you would have the, the local crime lab, maybe at Los Angeles or San Francisco, and they, they do DNA. And then they forward it up to the state of California, which is the Department of Justice of California. They have the database at the state. And then they forward it up to the FBI in the Washington, D.C. area. And the same happens in Florida and Texas. That way, if you have a, a criminal that went in the database in California, but then he went to Texas and committed a rape, both would forward it to the FBI and they would get a match. And then they, the FBI would inform the states. Because... Uh... You have a different uh, system of government. Yeah. Yes. You have a federal form of government. Yes. Here in the Philippines, it's uh, quite different because we have two uh, national uh, uh, investigating agencies. We have the National Bureau of Investigation and we have the Philippine National Police. They are all, they are, they are both uh, national uh, agencies. Sure. So, the way that my opinion of how that would work, sir, is you, you would have your, obviously, you, uh, the entity that's in charge of the database would control the hub, but each law enforcement agency, NBI, PNP, would, would have its own database and send it to the hub. So, for example, if the NBI is doing casework, you want to be able to share with the PNP's database, so they would have a workstation that they send up to the, to the PNP. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for that uh, input. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, the problem is a uh, turf between the NBI and the PNP. 
that 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 that, that is uh, that's given already because uh, per the the comments of the NBI from in their uh, uh, position paper, it seems that uh, we we need to harmonize everything. So anyway. That's not your problem. No. <laughs> that's that's my problem. Yes. Uh, so thank you for that uh, presentation. Absolutely. Uh, uh, here. How how I wish uh, we have the same capability, but we are going to that level. We, we are, oh yeah, no. Uh, I, I, we, I we represent uh, yeah. uh, PNP crime laboratories. How many DNA DNA laboratories do we have?